Hello, Oscillator Sync here. Neo Trinity from Bastel is a module for generating control voltage, which is the most generic description of a module I've ever made, but that's because it's a very flexible module which makes it hard to describe in a single sentence. It caters to your envelope, LFO, offset generation needs, but that's mixed in with a very jammable approach to sequencing and automation that welcomes rapid iteration on a performance if that's what you want. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In this video, my plan is to introduce Neo Trinity to you from an architectural standpoint, then try to give you a feel for its workflow by building up a patch through a few layers of complexity, while mixing in a few extra examples of patches I've been playing with as I've been exploring it. I don't intend for this video to be a full video manual, that's something I want to tackle in smaller chunks because as you get in depth with Neo Trinity, it can be shaped and bent to do many different jobs and a single video would be too long even by my standards. Before we jump into looking at the module in the interest of transparency, this video is sponsored by Bastel, so thanks to them for supporting what I do on the channel. Architecturally, Neo Trinity is made up of six channels of CV generation labelled A to F each with their own outputs. You select which channel you're editing with the corresponding buttons also labelled A to F. Each of these channels can be independently configured to do one of three general jobs, which are LFOs, envelopes and CV, the latter of which you can think of as offset generation with some extras. Each channel has a main parameter which you can control manually with the rate knob. This sets the rate of an LFO or an envelope channel or the offset of a CV channel. Beyond that, you can select other behaviours for each of the channels, such as the shape of the LFO or envelope, pitch quantization for the CV channels, uh, whether there is a slew applied, whether the channels are bipolar or unipolar, if the LFOs are tempo synced or free, whether the envelopes re-trigger, and so on. There's a lot you can customise, basically. There's an input labelled meta which sends CV to all six channels, which each channel can interpret in different ways. So that can be controlling the rate parameter, which can also be attenuated or inverted, scaling the output like a VCA, triggering envelopes or resetting LFOs, or sample and hold. You can also configure a channel to just ignore the meta inputs altogether, if that's what a patch calls for. Channels E and F additionally have their own extra CV inputs, which can do an extra job on top of what the meta input is doing for those channels. The real superpower of the module, however, comes from its automation. Each channel has two lanes of automation, one for triggers and one for that channel's rate control. The automation can be quantized to a clock, either the module's internal clock, uh, which also has its own output as it goes, or an external clock. And each channel's automation can be of a different length so that you can get your polymetric vibes on the go. As you can see, there's a lot that the module can be configured to do within a patch. So it's especially useful that you can save up to six of these configurations, including the automation data in one of six banks for recall later. Let's dive in now and build a patch. So to get acquainted with Neo Trinity's basic workflow, we're gonna start off in this patch with something really basic. And I've basically got the makings of a monosynth patch here. So I've got an oscillator that's going into a filter, it's going into a VCA there. And obviously we want to modulate those things so it's playable. Uh, just off to the side here, I've also got a uh, micro because I'm just using as a pitch controller because it's conveniently got CV gate and sort of the pressure mod out as well. So the main thing that we want to do if we want to turn this into a monosynth patch is we need modulation of our filter and crucially our VCA so we can actually hear things. Uh, so I'm going to take a channel of Neo Trinity, I'll just take channel A here, and I'll just bring that into the CV input for my VCA, and turn up the CV attenuator here. And now we can hear that it's uh, modulating the VCA and we can hear the output. Now at the moment it's modulating it like an LFO, which is not really what we want here, we want to have an envelope. So uh, making sure that I'm on channel A here, just by tapping the A button. I'm going to tap the mode button and go down into envelope mode. So we're in envelope mode now. Instantly, if we go down to CV mode, what we get is direct control over the CV uh, and some other things we can do as well. But we want an envelope here. Now, as a pro tip, when you're in envelope mode, if you want to preview what your envelope sounds like, you can hold down shift and tap um, rec here. And what the rate knob is going to do here is alter the length uh, of our envelope. So a longer envelope. 
to the right. It's quite a long envelope. At its longest, and over to the left we get snappier little dinks. Uh, we can also alter the shape of the envelope uh, by selecting one of the A through D here. So if you hold down Shift and we go to B, for example, what we're going to have now is something like the soft pop uh, envelope, where um, to the right it's still a decay envelope, like we had before. But over to the left we kind of get this attack decay thing instead. So that's the most versatile mode if you need to get a bunch of different shapes all at once. On C we have an attack envelope. So uh, we alter the length of the attack and then have that instant off. And on D what we get, and this is um, useful in certain types of patches, maybe not in every patch, this lets you set the length of a gate. So if I do this, we get a short little gate, but here, we get a long gate. I think probably for this patch we want a decay envelope though, like that. Obviously as fun as it is to be tapping things in on the buttons here, what we want to be able to do is trigger this envelope uh, via the um, microfreak in this case. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to bring the gate signal from the microfreak into the meta in. Now if I'm tapping away on the microfreak now, which I promise I'm doing, uh, we're not going to be hearing anything and that's because um, per channel you can tell the channel how it is meant to react to the meta input. So to select this, we hold down shift and we use the mode button here. Now the default, um, as far as like the initialized patch goes, is that it's going to be uh, affecting the position of the rate knob essentially. Uh, so see if you control over the rate knob, which obviously we, it's not gonna do anything here because we're not hearing the trigger at the moment. And you can cycle through different modes. So that's attenuated uh, rate, that's inverted rate, that's inverted rate, that's attenuated as well. And then we have um, VCA scaling of the output. And the one I want uh, here is trig, which is going to trigger the uh, envelope. Or in the case of the other modes, so in the LFO, we'll reset the LFO, for example. So now if I play something on the microfreak, lovely, we have uh, a triggered envelope. So I also want my filter to be uh, affected by an envelope, but not the same exact shape as the VCA. So I'm going to take a second channel of Neo Trinity, I'll just take B here, and put that into the CV input of my filter. At the moment it's uh, being an LFO. Um, quite fun but not what I want in this case I want it to be an envelope so what I could do is I could sit and uh, set everything up the same way as I had a but we have a shortcut for this as well so if you hold down a, uh, a channel and tap bank that's going to copy it and then if you come across to another channel and then press and hold then that will paste the channel settings in and now um, if I wanted to say um, on B, just change the filter shape maybe to that. Sort of slower attack decay thing, we can do that. But all the other settings are still set up. So at the moment, um, when I play notes on this monosynth, even if I hold down a key here, uh, the envelope completes and we don't get um, a hold section which is a shame because that's an articulation that might be useful to be able to play legato. But luckily we can actually set that up on Neo Trinity. So if I come back into channel A here, and we have our envelope shapes A, B, C, and D. Uh, e and F allow us to uh, set up, or E is to do with re-triggering. F is commonly called smooth. And what smooth does is different on each um, mode. So on CV, it gives you sort of um, slewing. On the LFO, well, it gives you slewing as well, but it sort of changes the shape of the LFOs. And on the envelopes, it essentially turns this into a, a slew limiter with a with a hold. So now, if I play a note and hold it down, I can play legato, and when I let go, we get that release segment there.
which is great. It's a bit more playable. So this oscillator that I'm using here has PWM on the square wave, and it seems a shame not to be uh, modulating it. So uh, let's do that. Let's take, I'm going to take um, channel E here, and I'm going to plug that into the PWM on the oscillator. And you can hear now, I'm still holding down the note, that um, the sound keeps disappearing. And the reason for this on this oscillator is that it expects the PWM to run from zero to, I think, five volts. It expects it to only be positive. Uh, and at the moment, um, channel E here is going to act um, to also provide a negative voltage. You can see it when it goes red here. Uh, that's not what we want. We want it to be unipolar instead. Well, we can set that up really easily. If you just hold down a channel and then tap mute, uh, that sits it into um, unipolar or bipolar if the light is on. So now we should be getting sound the whole time, which is good. Speed it up a bit. Now in the LFO mode, kind of similar to the envelope mode, we can hold down shift and choose different um, shapes here. So. That's a square wave. It's also a random one here. And here, if we turn on the smooth mode, like we did with our envelope, and so we get kind of smoothed modulation instead. So that's a smooth random, which is really cool, actually. Uh, or we can have a smoother um, sawtooth. I like the smooth random, though. Let's stick with that. Um, now, I might not want this to be going at full strength uh, at, at all times, so I might want to be able to modulate this. And obviously on the um, microfreak, we have the pressure uh, per key here that we could use. Now, um, it probably doesn't make any sense to be affected by the meta because that's just the gate signal, which is why I've gone into channel E because this has this independent input. And in the same way as we can with our metas, we can select what this input is doing. Uh, so I've just plugged in the um, pressure here. So at the moment, uh, if we hold down E, yep, it's going to be um, just doing the rate knob. So <laughs> yeah, uh, so I can affect the rate by how much uh, of my finger it is on the key there. Uh, but that's probably not what we want here. We probably want it to be affecting it like a VCA. So I'll hold down this and we'll tap through until we get to just the top light, which gives us VCA. So now we're affecting a smooth random LFO for the PWM based on aftertouch, essentially. Let's take a mini patch break. In this patch here, Neo Trinity is primarily acting as a bank of LFOs which are affecting the level of four different drones. So channels A, B, C and D are all set up as unipolar triangle LFOs and they're controlling the level of the VCA that each of the different drone signals are going through. If you listen to the way that the drones are fading in and out, you'll notice that it's somewhat chaotic. It's not um, a constant repeating pattern. Sometimes a particular sound might be fading slowly, sometimes it's faster. Uh, and the way that I'm doing that is by controlling the rate of these four channels via the meta input but each of the four channels are set up to respond to the meta input differently. So some are set up to just respond to it at full scale, some of them are attenuated, and some of them are inverted, and some of them are inverted and attenuated. And, and, and what that means is that as the voltage coming into the meta input changes, some of them are getting faster, some of them are getting slower, and by different amounts, which kind of give, gives us this sort of unsettled, chaotic feeling. 
In terms of what's actually driving the meta input here, um, initially I had um, channel F, which is set up to be a smooth random LFO, just plugged straight into the meta input. But the changes that I was getting in the rates was too high because the signal was just too hot. Now, obviously I could just grab an attenuator from somewhere else in the rack or even just a flying one, but I thought let's just do it all inside Neo Trinity because I happen to have a channel free. So what I've done is I've taken the output of our smooth random LFO and brought it into channel E, which is set up in CV mode with its input set up as VCA mode, which basically turns this into a tenuverter. Uh, and I've just turned the signal down by turning down the rate knob until the changes were noticeable, but not sort of too much. So the whole thing is built inside Neo Trinity without any external uh, modules. This slightly silly patch, which we can hear here, is one of those patches that you build to kind of prove that you can do it because proving that you can do a thing is a great way to sort of learn a module in a bit more depth. So other than the reverb that's floating around here, the only thing you're hearing actually is the Neo Trinity itself. And in particular, you're hearing channel F, which is in LFO mode, but it's running at audio rate, therefore sort of acting like a VCO. And it would actually respond to uh, Volts Proctor via the in or the meta input actually. Uh, we could change the uh, wave shape that we're hearing. They're all kind of lo-fi soundings. This is the triangle wave. Some sawtooth. Some square. And you can hear there's lots of aliasing going on in there because, you know, it's not meant to be a VCO, but that could possibly still be quite a neat basis for a kind of lo-fi oscillator sound. So just to explain the rest of this patch, um, probably need to go backwards now to uh, channel E. Uh, so channel E is what's providing the pitch information. It's a triangle LFO and it's patched into the input of uh, channel F. But you'll notice though that the pitches are stepped. And the reason for that is that the input of channel E is set to sample and hold mode. And what's controlling that sample and hold is channel A. So lots of self-patching going on here. So channel A is a pulse LFO, a square LFO. And every time that LFO goes high, it's going to sample and hold the current level of the uh, triangle LFO, which is given our pitch information, which is what's given us that stepping. It's kind of a, a fairly classic computer game sound technique from the 70s and 80s. Uh, you'll notice though that the uh, speed of the arpeggiations is not consistent and that's because of a bit more self-patching. Channel B is a slow triangle wave which is patched into the meta in. Uh, it itself is not responding to the meta in uh, but uh, channel A is uh, in terms of its rate which is what's changing the undulations here. Uh, just to sort of prove that, sort of put into a more sort of complete synth context, this could be quite uh, a, an interesting basis for an VCO. What I've done is taken the uh, square wave out here, which is sort of our trigger that's going into uh, an envelope. That envelope is then controlling a filter and a VCA, and obviously our oscillator signal is going through that. And those are quite pleasant lo-fi characters for bleep bloops actually I think so yeah lots of self-patching lots of misusing the module to do audio rate stuff but hey kind of cool sounding So that's all fairly basic use of Neo Trinity. Um, but let's say that I'm not a very good keyboardist because I'm not, and I want to be able to have this patch play itself or sequence itself. And this is kind of where the superpower of Neo Trinity comes in. So I'm just going to unpatch a couple of things. I'm going to unpatch the meta input from the gate signal. I'm just going to get rid of the PWM just for a second as well. So we're back to the point where I would have to trigger things um, manually, essentially. 
So I showed earlier that you can preview an envelope by just tapping shift and uh, sorry, holding shift and tapping rec. If you do it the other way around, holding down rec and tap shift, what you're going to do is write a trigger into that channel's automation lane. So now we can hear that, that particular uh, note is being fired off and we can add more like so. And if I decide I don't like what I've done, I can just double tap shift and it's gone. But we'll put some of that back in, I think. So there we go. Uh, we've got a sequence happening for our VCA on channel A. Uh, we haven't got our filter moving because that's on a different channel. And I could copy and paste the uh, channel across again. But I quite like decoupling filter and VCA uh, envelope sequences. So let's just tap something else in here. quite like it with uh, that uh, rate change in there as well and it's just as well because what we can now do is hold down rec and automate that and if I decide I don't like that I just double tap rec to get rid of it I do like it so Now at the moment our two sequences are the same length so they're kind of repeating nicely but you can change the length of automation on each of the channels independently either in um, sort of blocks of bars if you like by holding on rec and tapping the letters or if you hold on rec and go with mute or clock for up and down we can lengthen or shorten by one beat so we could do this. So now our um, filter envelope sequence is one beat shorter than our uh, VCA one, so we're getting this kind of overlapping sound. So obviously at the moment we've got quite a static um, melody here, which might be nice to have something a bit more dynamic, of course. Um, so uh, I've unplugged the Micro Freak from the VCO, and instead I'm going to plug in channel F. So obviously at the moment that's uh, an LFI, which is not necessarily what we want. <laughs> Although, you know, all these sort of sounds are fun. Uh, instead, I'm going to move this over into CV mode instead. Now, CV mode gives us direct control over the CV. Um, and in the same way that holding down shift and pressing the letters um, change things for our shape of our LFO and envelope, in uh, this mode, this is going to mostly affect how we are dealing with quantization. So if I turn D off here, we get smooth control of CV. If I turn on the D, then it's going to quantize the pitch. And um, if I turn on E, what this will do is give us a much wider range over the CV, which we don't want for this, I don't think. We want a, a smaller range. And A, B, and C uh, in combinations are going to give us different scales. So I'm just going to go. on its own and we see and a no just see on its own for a minus minor pen stock and now if I wanted to um, quickly sequence some sort of um, pitch sequence we can just hold down rack and So the length here is actually longer than our um, our VCA sequence here, but I kind of like having that static bit at the end. Of course, we could do a similar thing as we did with our filter and actually make this um, shorter or longer. We can try that. Yeah, 
that's kind of fun. So obviously this isn't designed to be super precise in terms of the sequencing, but it's designed to be quite jammable. And if I just want to get a new sequence in here, I can just do that really quickly. Yeah, <laughs> I like that one. Um, or if I wanted to come into A and change the way that my And it's all about being able to iterate those sort of performances quickly within a framework. Let's uh, see where we can take this next, but first, uh, let's take a look at some other patches that I've been playing with. What we have in this patch are three oscillators which are all being controlled by a single knob to find different chords. So what's going on here is that channels A, B, and C are all CV channels which are quantized minor pentatonic in this case. And that's what's affecting the volts per octave for each of the three oscillators. For each of them, um, the CV level is being affected by the meta input, but the way that they're responding to the meta input is different in each case. So one of them is responding full scale uh, positively, and others um, attenuated positively, and the other one is, I think, a, a inverted uh, negatively, which means that as you move the single control, um, each of the oscillators are staying within the scale, but are moving around by different amounts to find these different chords. Now, obviously, we don't need to be controlling this with a knob. We could give it a an LFO or a random source like we have on F here. And then if we combine that with a little bit of CV for envelopes coming from channel D, where I've automated both the triggers and the rate of the envelope. And then we give it a little bit of tempo synced stereo delay from Basil. We find ourselves in quite a nice place for a sort of chordy sequence that could go on quite nicely with a little bass line, I think. Trinity is all about generating or processing control voltage but it's got an input and it's got some outputs and voltage is just voltage so it may wonder what would it be like to run audio through Neo Trinity so I've got this sample running here this is the raw sample you're hearing at the moment and uh, this is what it sounds like running through Neo Trinity So the first thing to note is that the meta input, which is where my signal is going into, has a sample rate which is a fair bit lower than CD quality. And it's also filtered to, to smooth it. So you can hear that we've got kind of a dark sample rate reduced sound uh, with all the aliasing going on as well. So you're hearing um, outputs from channels F and E here, and they're both set to triangle LFOs at the moment. Uh, but the important thing is, is that their meta mode is set to uh, VCA in both cases, which means essentially we've got the LFOs acting like a, a, a VCA across our sample rate reduced signal. And we can go faster to sort of a faster tremolo kind of thing. I've got one on each side of the panning here. We can go all the way up into sort of like sample rate reduced ring mod. For the other 
outside as well. <laughs> so a niche sound, but I think it's quite a fun one. I've also got them um, uh, synced to the clock at the moment. Uh, let me just grab these and plug them into uh, CND because I've got a slightly different setup here. So rather than LFO, I've got envelopes which are sequenced. On one side you've got a decay envelope, on the other side you've got an attack envelope. And of course we can record in different patterns if you wanted to, or delete the ones that are there, or change the shape of the uh, envelopes. Uh, I've also got the output of Neogenity malted into a reverb and that sounds quite nice with these sort of envelopes. So obviously this is not the main reason to use Neogenity but misuse of modules is kind of a key fun part of modular so this is what it sounds like processing audio and I think in some cases this could be just the thing if you happen to have uh, Neo Trinity sat idle why not run some audio through it so to finish off this patch I need a beat and I need it quick and this is where some of the algorithmic filling on Neo Trinity come in really really handy so I'm just going to plug into channel C and at the moment this is an LFO which is not what I want I want it in uh, CV mode so that I can just trigger and I can record in you know a, a trigger pattern here but uh, I don't want to program in anything at all instead I want it to program it for me so if I hold rec then shift and then go for one of the letters across the top here or indeed ENF uh, we can choose different fill patterns and then by changing the rate knob it will fill it in different ways so um, A is kick patterns, B is snare patterns I think um, so here we are very quickly got to a kick pattern or we could choose a different one Oh, that's cool actually. Yeah, that works. Uh, similarly, um, I have a basic hi-hat setup waiting for some triggers. Uh, so we'll put that into D. And instead of using triggers in this case, I'm going to just use envelopes again but fill them algorithmically again. So I'm going to go uh, rec shift E for Euclidean and immediately we've got something in there. So quick. Uh, and then we could change the length of the pattern for our Euclidean fills. So quick to get stuff in there. And if I had a snare going spare somewhere, I could also do a similar sort of thing with the uh, with the snare algorithmic filling as well. Okay, we can change our kick pattern really quickly. So this really plays into this idea of this being a jammable instrument um, in the same way as sort of quickly iterating on those melodies and, uh, and gate patterns. It's really fun just to just move around these little beats and ideas um, in this really sort of quick way. Of course you could record another beat as well.
Thanks so much for watching, folks, and I hope that was a useful introduction to Neo Trinity. There's a lot more that I want to talk about with this module because you can go in really deep with the various different modes, but that will have to wait for another day and another video or probably a series of videos. In the meantime, though, if you have any further questions about the module, then feel free to leave questions in the comments of this video and I will do my best to get them answered. As always, thank you so much for joining me today and until next time, take care.